When you guys are ready, so am I. Go ahead. Or you want me to read this thing? Or? Yeah, you can go ahead. And read right. You ready? Yep, you can hey. just talk to the crowd. All right, four score and seven years ago. <laughs> there, this is a letter written by Elizabeth Goodman Redquist, who is Harry Redquist's wife. Harry Redquist was my dad's grandfather. Uh, it was written in 1936. Uh, Thomas and Mary Goodman on Son came to Crystal Lake in 1849 to their home on Virginia Street in the corner of Dole. That's where Andy's restaurant is, and that was a blacksmith shop. And it goes on to, well, let me read this a little bit there. They, they left Ireland in 1848. And they were nearly shipwrecked a short way out. The boat had sprung a leak and had to be towed back to Cork, Ireland, where they boarded another sailing and arrived in Boston without trouble after a month on the Atlantic. Tom, Thomas Goodman was the blacksmith by trade. But it, but it goes on to say he was a blacksmith there and he actually got kicked in the head by a horse and died right there at where Andy's restaurant is. Um, but he was a good one. Yeah. And Goodman. Goodman. And then it also says about uh, there was no Roman Catholic church in Crystal Lake at the time, so they had to walk all the way out to Mount Tabor Cemetery. There was a supposedly, I guess, a Catholic church out there. That's that's where they went to church. So. Yeah, so they, you think it was hard for us when we were kids? I don't want to go to church. It would be like a 10 mile walk and back. <laughs> Those were dedicated Christians there. And uh, and it goes on. If you want to read that, I think it's pretty interesting. Do you want me to read the whole thing? Okay. <laughs> okay, I read the first part here. Uh, I'm not going to read it. They came to Chicago and he worked at his trade for a year but didn't like city life. They had to come to Crystal Lake by stagecoach to the same to the place on Virginia Street, which they owned until they died. Crystal Lake was a beautiful little lake about three quarters of a mile wide and half mile long, northwest of Chicago. Virginia Street was on was an Indian trail, which is Virginia Street is fourteen. It was an Indian trail and was a small settlement of a few families. They were Roman Catholics, there was no church there. So many years after, they walked, oh, four miles. Four miles to a tiny church west of Crystal Lake called Mount Tabor. That, there's a cemetery there now, and that's where Beth keeps her horses on Tabor Road. Uh, Mary and Thomas had five sons and three daughters. Patrick, Peter, James, John, and Thomas. Mary, Julia, and Elizabeth. Mary Farrell Goodman was born in 1820 and Manahan, Makara, Mac across Ireland. No, must be Irish, I can't understand. <laughs> um, later, a sister, Judith, came in 1824. I'm in 1946, 1846, she married Thomas Goodman. Um, after settling in Crystal Lake on Virginia Street, corner of Dole, they had a one acre land, a house, and a blacksmith shop. They raised eight children, poor but happy. At the age of eight years, Elizabeth's father was accidentally killed by a horse in his shop, January 7, 1879. Elizabeth was the youngest. Her brothers and sisters had, had a lot of her. She went to school and grade school there, and then to high school there. Her brothers fought her brother, oh, her brothers bought, brought an organ. She took a few lessons, but from practice became an excellent organist. She graduated from high school with the first class in 1884 in Crystal Lake. In high school, she was she studied such subjects as ancient history, algebra, etc. But okay, now this is Grandma McMillan's mother, so they're saying that she was the head of the. She played the organ for the church, and then Grandma McMillan played the organ, and then Carol Gravett. So, like, for like 150 years, uh, they were the organists at the Catholic Church in Crystal Lake. That's some dedication. Yeah. Um, About when that was wrote by Grandpa McMillan's grandma, this was, they dressed him up in the, the Scottish dress, not dress probably, what's it called? Kilt. Kilt. 
and uh, this would be in about 1935, because he was born in 28. This is a Joe was talking about Goodman. Joe did a DNA test and it shows right here where they came from in Ireland that is a direct thing that we have proof that not only by word but by DNA that they're related. Wow. Is that the is that the Monahan or whatever? Yeah. So when did they come over? Ulster, Ireland, South Magahanan. Something like that. Did I hear 1828 they came over? Um, something like that. 1840 something. They left. They left Ireland in 1848. Okay. Right. The and they got to Crystal Lake another year. The word that starts with an M is that the name of this town they came from? Yeah. But you said something about coming out of Cork, and I believe that's, that that's probably the um, Port the Wands came out of the Cork area also. It's in a vast majority of. Irish people that emigrated from Ireland came out of that port in Cork. Oh, port that was like Cork. the port where you get on a boat. Yeah. So they could have lived 40 miles from there or whatever. Down yeah. in that area was where the Titanic was built. Really? In Ireland. Oh. They have a museum down there. About. Are you going there in March? Here's another. This would have been about the same generation. It's, it's on my mom's side where Mrs. Lizzie Dwan. Drowned in Creek, north of Marengo. This is, I believe, 1931. She was walking back from her sister's house. I think it was New Year's Day, and uh, she was by herself, and she slipped into the river, and they found her the next morning with claw marks on the side of the mm -hmm. river, and she, she, she was drowned. And that's a scrapbook that who put together? Um, this must have been Grandma Norman's scrapbook. That's my mom's mother. Pick it up and show them the binding, how, yeah, how many hands it's, that it's touch It's pretty it. old. <laughs> wow. You look at the back end of it, show that part of the camera. There you go. Wow. And, and there's all kinds of rest. They're uh, newspaper clippings. Yeah. Started out as uh, recipes and stuff. Did you put it together? I think um, my grandma Norman, that's my mom's mother. Unless it was a, no, yeah, that's my mom's mother, I guess. But there was, there was a couple articles. She clipped out a lot of news articles. And here is one. Uh, Clarence Anthony killed by train on Calhoun Street, 1916. That, that's right downtown Woodstock. There was just, uh, I don't know if there's any relation, but there were some Anthonys that we were related to. I used to go visit somebody in yeah, Woodstock in a little Don, house that I remember there was a gable right over the door. Don Anthony? Uh, well, I don't know this wasn't him because this is 1916. Do you know the person's name that came from Ireland was the direct uh, immigrant? Yeah, it was uh, Goodman. It was Goodman. Yeah. So that, that would have been how many generations back? 1848, so that was, uh, that was, it was this lady's mother. mother. Ma it was her parents, and that was, her name, her, she was a Goodman, and she married Harry Ridquist, okay. who was my dad's grandfather his mother's father yeah so then was so grandma's side was more of the irish side just about yeah irish scottish no, well the goodman was irish mostly i think okay i think the, the scottish came from my dad's or grandpa's side i'm not I think so. where's robert where's, <laughs> where's our dna expert are you talking your great grandfather your great yeah, this is my great grandfather. Great great grandfather would be the one that came across yeah. the sea. And his name was hey, Robin, Goodman. We got some no, questions for you. Yeah. He was a McMillan. Could you come over here? Huh? And explain? Grandpa's, well, I guess the one side was Goodman, over. the other side was McMillan. Um, well, the, on this side it was Grandma McMillan, and she was a Ridquist, and her mom was a Goodman. Uh, <laughs> what now? Yeah. All right. So the Goodmans were the ones that brought. Grandma McMillan's side to the U.S. When that was, and can you explain? Grandma McMillan. Norman. Well, no, not Norman. A Goodman married Harry Ridquist. Yeah, he said that. Okay. Okay, and that was, you know, and we know that her parents were the ones that immigrated over from that part of Ulster, Ireland. Okay. The Manhattan or whatever, like that. Yeah, I can't. It's actually, if you look at the, a map of present-day Ireland, uh, that county is 
split into Northern and uh, Ireland and regular Ireland. Okay. They, you know, it was a part of the legal battle going on, you know. But we believe, I believe, what I what I read was they would be in what is now legally Ireland, rather than Northern Ireland, part of that county. Okay. Not not sure of that, for, but whatever. What else is there? So I know I've always heard the story of one of my great or one of my ancestors got, was on a shipping boat from Sweden. That was Harry Ridquist. Okay. Right. So if you kind of break that down a little bit, that would be awesome. Yeah, he was born on the Rio Grande, I think, yeah, wasn't he? Harry Ridquist would have been my dad's mother's that's, father, yeah. which would be this man here, yeah. that yeah. be his wife, he'd yeah, be that, a good man. That's, that would yeah. be Elizabeth Goodman, yeah. right? Yeah, Harry, Harry Ridquist was born was on the Rio Grande River. What I, what I understand was his father was a merchant marine, so they would haul cargo from country to country, and when they were, when they were like, 16 years old, if they wanted to get off the boat, they could they could get off wherever they wanted. Some of his brothers got off in Australia, and my grandma kept in contact with them for many years, but after it would be World War One or World War Two, she lost contact of them. And uh, we, when he got off, it was he was born in the Rio Grande River in calmer seas, and then they sailed back out, and then 16 years apparently later, they went to Texas and he got off and they I, I think that they let him off the boat and they sailed off and maybe he never saw him again. I think. Yeah, he ditched it, whatever. Then he you know, went, I mean it was pretty common for yeah. sailors to just say to hell with it, I'm tired of that life and move on, you know. Yeah. Wanna see some different scenery. So he somehow or another from Texas made himself made his way to Crystal Lake and that's where his life started. He was a carpenter and he built a few houses or several houses in Crystal Lake. He and lived. in the winter when it was too cold to do carpentry work, he was cutting ice on Crystal Lake that they would use for everybody that had an ice box and hauled some into Chicago, I understand. Yeah. He's the one he lived to like ninety six. When he was in his seventies he could walk up stairs on his hands and he roofed his house when he was in his eighties. Yeah, and some neighbor said to my grandma, she was a younger lady then, you gotta tell your father to he can't be putting a roof on his house when he's 80. And she said he owns this house, and if he says he's going to put a roof on the house, that's what he's going to do. <laughs> They're not going to be telling him not to. So. This is uh, the Dewan, the one that drowned in the river. Her husband had this, this is a Catholic cemetery uh, certificate of all the cemetery plots. And uh, they, they must have had some unhealthy kids because it's six children were buried before well, they're children so they're obviously young and uh, one was 11 months old it says and six children in 1894 one in 1899 two of them died in 1910 then it has that Lizzie Dewan that I was talking about that was that was 1932 and then Dennis Dewan her husband died in 1950 and it's out in uh, Belvedere I, I went out and found the cemetery plots and when they made pen penicillin, that was that saved a lot of childhood yeah. diseases. Somebody would get a fever, and then they would just they had no way of dealing with it, and they would just die. Life expectancy wasn't too long back then. <laughs> so what do we know about uh, Dad's um, oh, father's yeah. family? When they, they settled in on Squaw Creek and yeah. Crystal Lake, between Crystal Lake and McHenry. They yeah, had, a, had a sawmill, and they... They cut a lot of the trees down and made lumber. A lot of things got probably built from their lumber until there was, from what I understand, there was, the trees were about all cut down. So they, rather, because they had a grid mill, then they made a grid mill on that Squaw Creek to power the, the, the mill. or the, So they kept the business going, but just changed it into a grid mill rather than a sawmill. A grid mill is where they Griff. grind oats and grind grain so they can make bread and feed the, feed everybody with grain. You could call it a flour mill. Flour it's just a little bit different style of the mechanisms that do the job are slightly different, you know. Probably a big, big wheel that got powered by the creek and it turned and it 
smashed down grain no. and turned it into powder. Flour, but. Is there there at the mills? No, I don't think so. So we know the McMillans came over here about 1797, about, and the father and son and wife, they all came. We don't know where, unfortunately, in Scotland or in um, Ireland that they immigrated from because a lot of the British were, uh, Scotland was part of, you know, the British Empire, and so they were, they hated the Irish, so they would take over the Scots and have them go over there and run the land and so forth and be like the landlords. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why there's a Northern Ireland actually now and a, that because of the British or the English actually, you know. So we don't know where they're from and then they, they immigrated to Schenectady, New York and then Samuel McMillan came here in what year about? Uh, it says right here, uh, Samuel McMillan and his family were born in Princeton, New York in 1815, and uh, two years later, located in McHenry County. And oh, so Samuel was, was born in the United States? Yes. Oh, I thought he was born over there. So no, it was no, his, his father. His father was Thomas, oh. and he, oh. was, he was born in Ireland. Uh, I was told Scotland, and I assume that's correct, you know. He was born in Scotland, his, and his father's name was Andrew, and that's as far back as we know. Yeah, it says, there two brothers that had the mill? Yeah. Uh, yeah. James Sam. and Sam. Samuel. Here's where it says uh, he, he settled on a tract of 80 acres yeah, of government know. land which he entered and to which he made additional additions until he was an owner of 200 acres in Nunda Township, becoming successful as a Republican he died in 1855, 1885. So what do you have there, Dad? Uh, is there any way to like pull in on a picture? And <laughs> yeah, I've got some of these. Okay, well. Yeah. I'm trying to find his father. All right, and then just hold uh, it up for me for a few yeah. seconds. Okay, I'll we'll get it. Okay. There he okay. is right there. This is the one that he came across. Can you uh, can pull in on that yep. or not? This is okay. Samuel McMillan. Right. He's this is his wife. His wife. Jane Jane Ann Fall or something like that. Her maiden name was. Samuel was born in 1815 and he died in 1865. Farrell? It's either Farrell or something like that. I don't remember it. F-A-R-R-E-L or Something like that. He, he's buried in the McMillan Cemetery right. out in They're Crystal Lake. In the, he arrived in, the, in Terracotta in 1838, and he was married in 1843 by Jane uh, Jane Wicker. Or no, Wilson? I think it was Wicker, wasn't it? No. Oh, he was married by... Married too. Wilson. Jane Ann Wilson. Okay, okay I was wrong. Her name was Jane Ann Wilson. That's okay. right. Yeah. Now, their son... Is, is this man, and his name is Andrew Thomas. He was one of the, one of the sons of Layla. Samuel. Layla. He was born in 1845, and he died in 1912. Gotta move the chair. Come. <laughs> and his wife's name Marion Wicker. He's coming to the band. And that my grandfather is the, is the son of Andrew. This, he really looks a lot like Stan, who just came to the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's who that was? Yeah. You sure that wasn't uh, Andrew? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew was always on time. No! <laughs> <laughs> back this back step a little bit. This is uh, Harry Ridquist, the one that his, uh, they had a one acre and they, he was a carpenter. He roofed his house when he was 80 years old. He was a hand walker? He, yeah, he, he ripped houses on his hands. But his name was Harry, but he hardly had any hair at all. Yeah. Oh, at the end, they didn't call him Harry, they called him Baldwin. Hairless. Hairless. <laughs> Here we go. All right, keep going so don't get distracted. What, what else? Is, where are we at in history? Just coming back. Well, we got to talk about this woman here. As far as genealogy and history goes, this woman is right here. Her name is what? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Wicker. 
Marion Wicker that be her family was the one that developed Wicker Park in Chicago. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> that was a not not an ancestor, a cousin of hers. Wow. And they're okay. they're a very handsome couple. Uh, yes. Yeah, they are actually. Here's a younger picture of them with all their kids. Oh, did you show them this one already? Is that the one with all the children? You know that this was the their grandfather here also or their grandfather, right? Your yeah, that's our grandfather. Earl. Earl. McMillan. McMillan, right. Oh, I thought that was dad. He was a very manly little boy. No, it was Earl. He was, was also, dad. He was also that burned, is not burned like, as a witch. It's black and white, but that's actually not a, like a legal carton. It's just what they had, a towel, and they made it into a, you know. A kilt. A kilt. You know, it looked, no, but it looks cool, you know. But Definitely. Little kid probably enjoyed it at that time in history. But a, lot of, a lot of the McMillans like wearing dresses. Anyway, the Wicker. This, this was before he was The Wickers came from... Uh, a long line that traces all the way back to the English kings. And a lot of the uh, I mean, Iranians, what would be now, well, it used to be Persians, Romans, uh, Slavians, um, Ukrainians, Belarus, Sweden, Finland, Norway, uh, William the Bru or, uh What's his name? The Bruce. You know, it, it, a lot of Scottish, a lot of English, Normans, all of them. Related to just about all the nobility from uh, back, you know, around a thousand when William the Conqueror came over here, and or not over here, but he came to England and kicked the Anglo-Saxons out, all of that. If you get into history, if you look at it, there genealogy you're going to find many a name in history you know so some of them not so great but most of them okay then jump up to 1914 this is grandma mcmillan she was a redquist at the time she taught at the schoolhouse on the corner of 31 and edgewood road in crystal lake she only taught there like a year or two but then her her husband which which was earl Lived next door, I believe, right at that. Yeah. And then they met there. Andrew and lived there, and he was the son was of the Andrew. Son. But, Earl. but they met there, and then they, I guess she liked the, they liked each other, and they got married uh, 1917, somewhere and, around there. And I heard that uh, 15, I believe, but no. Earl, my grandfather, he, they had some church social, and you could buy a basket and take a girl out on a, a picnic. And apparently he had bought... Anna's basket, and they went out together on a picnic, and the rest was history. And that schoolhouse in the mid '80s, I, I lived there for. It was turned into a, a little apartment house, and I rented it from Watson Lau for about five years. Yeah, it's still there. Oh yes, me too. And, and Melissa was a newborn baby brought to that house. Talk about the farm. The and next door to there, which Grandma McMillan. She was uh, the teacher there. She she rented a room from the McMillans on the farm next door so that she could be the school teacher there, and and ended up marrying their son. But, uh, yeah, and then the, right down the road from there, there's a it was it was probably an equivalent of a county cemetery, but being that a corner of the McMillans property, they must have donated or sold for a cemetery. And a lot of them are buried there, all the ones that had the grid mill. And, and all. It wasn't just McMillan's that were, anybody that lived in the area could be buried there. I think, I think the cemetery was established in 1843, and the, that was the first, first person that was buried there was 1843. And I actually bought a plot there, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> You'll be next. <laughs> Yeah, there's a McMillan Meadows over there. Here. Same building. Wow. That's on the McMillan. But this was rebuilt. You know, it's more up to date or whatever. It still existed, I believe. Had the I think the I think they pulled down the tower though, the windmill. 
I don't know how well you can see yeah, that. Yeah, I can see it crystal clear. So is that what now is McMillan Estates? The I think this is on the north side of Edgewood Road. Mm -hmm. Oh. That the one on the south side is, was not the original brick and house. George Lau corrected me. He knows every damn thing. Why don't we, why don't we bring Make him sure over here? Make sure you cut that out of there, okay? <laughs> George, actually, Watson, George Lau, Lau's father, Watson, was married to uh, Marion. What was her last Shales. Shales, who was the niece of their grandfather. And apparently her parents both died of some fever, young, and she was just a young girl. And uh, Andrew, these people, they, they raised her because her parents both died young. And so she was raised as one of theirs. Here, here's Grandpa McMillan and his buggy going over to, to uh, what do they call that, court Anna Ridquist. Because oh, yeah. she left her umbrella or... Uh, Handkerchief in there. And he had to return it. So he'd have to come back and see her again. Then Harry Redquist, no, get off my property. <laughs> okay, so we move up some decades? Or, uh, yeah, what you want? That was, uh, that was good. That was a good face. What about all your pictures here? Well, my, my father, Ralph McMillan, which is the father of most of the people in this room, <laughs> he, was quite a, he was quite the motorcyclist, and when he, he was the, the fifth son, or he had two, four older brothers, and they all rode motorcycles, so he would ride his brother's motorcycles until he got to be like 15, and then he bought his, his own. But this is uh, in 1952, and the bike was a 1942 45 cubic inch uh, Harley, which he usually would have a full dress Harley as a street bike, and this would be his dirt bike. And this would be what he'd probably ride on the street. This is a 47 74 cubic inch Harley. This would have been before he went to Korea, so it'd probably be oh, in the early 50s. And then uh, I, think, I think this is the same 45 cubic inch bike that he rode through the, back in those days, they didn't wear helmets, I guess. And they smoked cigarettes. Smoke, oh, lucky, lucky strikes. Lucky strikes and, and Lucky's lit and legs up. And then I think this picture is kind of neat because it, it was taken in 61, uh, but the bike is a 58, so it's only a three-year-old <coughs> motorcycle. And this would have been his first motorcycle that he had that wasn't an Indian or Harley. The lighter bike, and they went just as fast, but... Uh, so that that's a Triumph, what and then I that again? What? this is a, a '58 Triumph Thunderbird. Okay. It's a two-cylinder 650. But I, he never did go back to Harley's. They were so big and heavy, and he had a couple Triumphs, and then he rode a couple BSAs, and then in 1972, he he started riding Japanese bikes. That's when the Japanese motorcycles kind of took over the the market. There's still obviously Harley Davidsons, but. Uh, he always rode Japanese bikes from there on. Yeah. They were faster. Yeah. Huh? Yamaha or Kawasaki? It was a Kawasaki 72 uh, three-cylinder two-cycle, which that was the first big two-cycle street bike. It was faster than all of them. I rode it, first time I rode it, I was like three months old, and I, it wobbled on me. I went down. Went His down brand new motorcycle. Oh. Can, you, can you tell me about that weekend, Jeffy? Yeah, that was, that, was, <laughs> that was a rough weekend. It was... It was Labor Day weekend of 1972, and Friday night I had a 67 Camaro, and I, uh, in, by the Cary Golf Course, I was going, going through those curves there, and I lost it and rolled it, and my parents were up camping up in Lakeland Campground up in Wisconsin. I went up the next day to tell them about it, and they felt bad and everything, but my dad didn't feel bad enough to, when I asked him to take his motorcycle for a ride, he goes, be careful, and about five minutes later I wiped it out. There was a yeah, but there was a recall. In the yeah, there was something. It it started wobbling, going straight down the road. Yeah. So they, they made good on they bought him a new front tire. Yeah, <laughs> but, and I, I, I guess I wasn't too scared about it because I went out and bought my own about a year later. I guess I enjoyed that little. What kind of injuries? I had just all scraped up, and I I didn't break. I had a sprained ankle, and I had a had a helmet on, so. 
he's but, but it didn't it didn't cause what I how I am today though. <laughs> yeah, just that was the beginning of it. I remember just a lot of times getting on the motorcycle, I get this brush, you know, and it was probably my my first heart palpitations. In a good way, that's Yeah. The adrenaline rush that motorcycles get is probably one of the reasons why we ride them today. <laughs> I used to remember going for a ride with Dad on the blue motorcycle. And he would make sure I would promise not to tell Mom that we went 120 miles an hour. <laughs> I should show you these. They're pretty cool old pictures. This is my mom's mother, Helen Dewan, when she was like three years old, it looks like. And here's a, here's a real old picture, too. Of the, Helen, my mom's mom, Helen Dewan. Can you see that? And what was her, um, she, wasn't she a seamstress? Yeah. Well? Yeah, she was uh, a... What do I do with all those army pictures? Mm -hmm. Didn't one of the seamstress do sewing on Crystal Lake? I thought he, a lot of gangsters used to come to Crystal Lake for summer houses, and, and I, from what I hear, Grandma was a seamstress, and I think she was a, a widow and pretty young in life, so she had to make a living. And she used to repair people's clothes and b make wedding dresses. But I heard that she uh, repaired and for Al Capone and some other gangsters. When she lived on 14, I think that story I heard is uh, Orson Welles. He was a fairly just up-and-coming actor at the time, probably the 40s. He was in Citizen Kane, and he... He had a flat tire or something. He came and asked, knocked on their door and asked to use their telephone. This is Christ was uh, uh, yeah, Orson Welles. Well, I am late to the show. <laughs> 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 Orson <laughs> Welles. Well, 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 <laughs> and Grandma used to make dresses for Don Amici's wife too. Don Amici. Did, did she make Grandpa Earl? <laughs> <laughs> what did Don Amici do? Take the hat off. And then I'll have hair like these guys. Oh, man. Hairy, hairy thing we get. Jeez. Get the bald and beautiful out. And when it comes to motorcycle, I, I helped Dad get this one. And he had a, a nephew that sold him this 1974 four-cylinder Kawasaki 900 KZ. And uh, the nephew already had it hopped up. But uh, one day he came home, and I have a machine hooked to it. It was a dwell meter. To the dad, that was Greek. What are you doing with my motorcycle? Well, I set the dual points, and then said, "We'll go take it for a ride." And he goes, "Oh, it's way faster than it was." <laughs> that was a fun day for me. He always had to have he the had fastest awesome motor motorcycles. What nephew was Glenn McMillan owned the bike before, and he even made the comment to Ralph McMillan that, uh, "Wow, Ralph, you've been." Keep in nice shape of that bike, and uh, Dad came clean. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Are those Korean pictures over there of the war? There's some in my book. I had some. No, oh, everybody wanted to get this stress before you did all of them. Should we take an intermission? Yeah. I had one yeah. picture. Right. Right. Here's some Korean pictures. Yeah, but I had a bunch that I brought there. If we take an intermission, you got to stop talking about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's correct. Either that or, or talk about it. Remember, try to remember what the hell he just said. Woo! 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 Woo!
So like this side down here is that goes here. All of this is like my the my side of the family, cousins, my cousins, my kids' cousins, and a little bit of their ancestors. All of this up here <coughs> all comes it's English, French, um, Swedish, uh, Norwegian, uh, Ukrainian, Belarus, France, Belgium, Netherlands, uh, Ital Italy. Um, Spain used to be called Castile and Aragon, both of them. Um, they, you might remember, I don't know if you remember, they hear the Isabel and uh, the... <laughs> Okay, when you can't think of that, where they were killing everybody in around the time of Columbus. Well, they were like cousins of yours. Oh, Ferdinand and Isabel, they started Spain after they got married. The Inquisition, they're your cousins, oh, you know. So then, you know, like a lot of these, uh, the main line that I intentionally put goes all the way back to these guys from ancient Lydia in about 700 BC. That's as far back as I've traced. Actually, there is a line that I know of that supposedly the, the old Jewish people put together. It'll go back to Adam and Eve. And there's actually a thing, but I don't know how reliable that is information, you know. But there's a lot of people in here like Charlemagne. The <coughs> in here, there's some of the English kings like Edward I. John of England, if you remember from, if you ever seen the movie um, Robin Hood, one of the Robin Hoods, it had Errol Flynn in it, and it had John, who was Prince John was a king. Well, he became king of England. He was a, he was a bad dude, by the way. He was pretty nasty. He was also involved with the Magna Carta, if you ever heard that. That was like the first step into... Um, uh, democracy, okay. you know, the Magna Carta. And John was against it, though. He was for, forced into it. But I don't know. And then, like I said, there's the Bruce family. And then there's some, like, Beauchamps. They were, um, I just happen to know they're right here. They were um, Norman originally, but they had been in England since, like, 1100. So, I mean, they've been there a long time. But they were all patronage workers of... You know, they were like um, generals or colonels or military people or some, someone who did something for William the Conqueror. And so he, when they came and conquered England, they split everything up. That's the way wars are, you know? I mean, uh, we talk about the Indians in this country and taking away all their stuff. We didn't invent that. Americans didn't invent taking stuff away from other people. Europeans. It's been going on forever, you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who I, you know, without it'll be pulled in on some of the names that you can see right here. I don't. I can't even read it. My eyes are getting blurry. They're so little. William. <laughs> but I see you can see when it goes back to some of them. I don't. It doesn't go back very far. Others of them do. Here's some. Uh, that looks like either. Um, Swedish, or sometimes the Swede names and the Norwegian, the Viking names, are so much like the um, Welsh people. The Welsh name have real, real long names, and you know that that's on the coast. Well, Wales is, and the Vikings would come in there, and when they'd come in and invade, they'd take over, you know, and they they were smart enough to know that they'd take wives that were from the nobility of the people that they just killed so that they could stop the other people, the low-life people, the serfs, the peasants, what they'd call a low-life in those days, which would be like what we are now, <laughs> you know. And you know, so they would marry them, and that way you would, you know, have that. There's also a bunch of times in here, and I don't know if I can show you where, I'd have to look for a while where you have, somebody will have a, two, child, two children. There's one that was a woman and her brother. 
The woman was probably at least 20 years older than the brother. The woman had a child. That child had a daughter. That daughter married the original person's brother. So he married his great niece. Right. Well, that's why, you know, the English kings had a bunch of trouble with the, oh, I don't remember what they call that, you know, where you're marrying it, you're having sex with people too close, your relatives, and it screws you up. Like George III of England was that real bad about that. I don't know. It's hard to read all these names because my eyes, here's a, these are a bunch of, of uh, there. There's also somewhere in here, and again, it's really hard. Oh, here's the Caesars. Here's the Roman Caesars, some of them. Anyway, um, the biggest name in there is a Julius Caesar's family. Julius Caesar didn't have any kids, but his sister did. And, you're, and you're, that's one of your ancestors. Wow. You know, and, uh, and, that's back. and I also, I believe, uh, and I don't remember where his name is. Again, it's so hard. Octavian, if you ever heard of that name, he came... Octavian's, or that's his like born name or whatever, or his family name, and he was became Julia or uh, Caesar Augustus. Oh, okay. You know, you've heard that name, right? And then I, I believe you're also related to Constantine. He was the one who Constantine the Great. You know, they called him the Great. He was the one who started the Catholic Church. Oddly enough, the Nicene, have you ever heard of the expression Nicene, or the, not expression, there's a Nicene Creed, it's a big religious, all of them practice it. That was instituted by a group of people who are at Nicaea, and Constantine the Great's the one who did it. I think he just did it to control the population, personally. Started a church so that he could control the, you know, Christianity was getting to be a big thing, and Chris, he was smart enough to know it and take advantage of it. He saw an yeah, he saw an opportunity to control the population without, you know, give them religion, uh, whatever. Whether it's true or not, I don't care. It's not important, you know. Right. And I don't know, you know. You'd have to really focus on each, and it's hard for me to say what they all are because I can't read the damn things. <laughs> You know where, it's too um, dark in here. You know where like our family like close is that you said it's like right over yeah, there. Yeah. Your here's your grandfather right here. Here's your grandmother. You know, you can, can you see that or not? Yeah, I can adjust it. Right, so. it look like you can can you pull it in more or no? Oh there you go. I would do it until you can read it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's right there. That's uh, Missy and me. Well, and there's just that interesting little thing here is that this line right here is Susie Barsh, Suzanne Barsh. She married Joe McMillan, which is your uncle. And this green signifies that it's not an ancestral line of my kids. Okay. So... But if you trace this back to this person right here, then back up and I'll show you where he is. Then if I follow that around at about this height, I come to him right here. It's the same person. Oh, I remember. So what it's that. saying is, is that Sue married her cousin Joe. <laughs> and then another ironic thing was I did a gene, my side of the family, my sister, I'm right here, and my sister married this guy. And so I did a genealogy search for my nephews. Mm -hmm. And I followed them back. And oh, lo and behold, they tap into your line. So my nephew is like a double cousin to my kids. Jeez. You know? So it's kind of weird things like that. Mm -hmm. You're related to the bushes are on here. In fact, I saw their name here. Where did I see that? Uh, somewhere here, the, there's a line, the Bushes are related to you, and so is uh, Trump, so is Hillary Clinton, um, and I believe Obama, 
and almost all the presidents, because all the presidents have some type of, of English blood in them, almost every one of them, except for Martin Van Buren. Okay. Martin Van Buren was Dutch or whatever, you know, okay. so. Cool. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> That's pretty heavy. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I had no idea that was happening. <laughs> Here, put it in your pocket. I don't have to put it in that pocket. No? Well, if you're going to do that, let's wrap the cord up. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was March. It was a sunny day. Terry got on the 21st of May, and you got on the 23rd of May. What is that, like a calendar? Mom has like a journal. Just a bunch of dates, so. <laughs> Significant <laughs> times on the All right. <coughs> <laughs> I don't know who it is. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's, that's like 15. White tiles. Oh. Yeah. Whose fell from was that? Huh? Who's, whose was this? Grandma Norman's? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Okay. And whoever wants to jump in can share stuff. But do you want Helen's book for the war story stuff? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I would have to study it to really know I could just go through it, but should I just talk about these pictures that I have? Yeah, about the one you know. Go for it, big daddy. Okay. All right, we are rolling. I I just wanted to say, these pictures are when my dad was in the Korean War in 53, and uh, he trained in California before he went to Korea, and I think that's what this one is. I, I'm not really, it doesn't say on the back. Hold it still when you have Okay. And then these are some that he was showing off his rifle. Can you zoom in there? Hold it for a sec. This was June in 53 in Korea. All right, you can move on. This is a M1 carbine, and they duct taped two clips end to end so that once you ran out with one, you could spin it, turn it over, and then you'd have it, the next clip ready to go. And then uh, this was, is a camp that they had in 53. Most of the, these are all from 1953. This was the winter of 53, and apparently it was pretty cold there. It was in February, but by the looks of those boots and that Parka, it was pretty cold there. Yeah, yeah. like the weather we had in the, the winter of 2019, it was 60 below with the wind chill. Uphill both ways. <laughs> and now our driveway is three quarters of an inch of ice for three quarters of a mile. Well, I just wanted to say some stories about when we were kids growing up. I had an older brother, him. He was three years, three years older, and I used to see him take my dad's motorcycle out when my dad wasn't home. So I, I was in eighth grade, so I put my dark shield on my helmet, and then I just took it out on the road. How old are you when you're in eighth grade? 13? Not old no. enough to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> and I, and I went, went out on the road and well, went for a ride, and that was a lot of fun, but it was even more fun to take his oil truck around the block, too. <laughs> And I don't know why the neighbors didn't call my dad and say, you know, your 13-year-old boy is driving your oil truck around the... Well, the neighbors <laughs> I took my first date in that oil truck. <laughs> <laughs> and then one time they had a, I think it was a 1961 or 62 Ford Fairlane. And, uh, the Whistler. The Whistler and the uh, Galaxy 500. Anyway, we hot-wired it, Joe and I did. I don't know if either of us had our license. So that was all going real well. We were out for a nice country drive until we had a flat tire. And the flat tire, I mean, the spare tire was in the trunk, which you needed a key to get in, and we didn't have one. <laughs> so we went, we walked up to the first farmhouse, and it smelled like Tomcat urine. And it was a, like a 500 pound lady with really huge, and she had two footstools, one leg on each one. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to eat me. <laughs> yeah, we had actually had the whole family in there because. We're babysitting every, you know, I think. I was with. Yeah. And oh, um, really? we went to the drive-in. 
that's where our destination oh, was. We were oh, really? back from the drive-in, so it was late when we had to knock on that farm door. Oh. And then they had a friend with the same kind of car, and they brought us a tire. Oh, really? <laughs> we yeah. never did have the key. <laughs> so you guys ought to have kids, you know. The world had one. I took that same car out one time with Donna Burnett, and I'm pretty sure the dash, the dashboard didn't light up. Because we couldn't figure out if it was, we were in reverse and drive. I didn't know the order at that time because I didn't even have a license. <laughs> so we, we put it in reverse and it dropped a little bit. It was like Spring Beach. I remember it was in Spring Beach. And then unfortunately, the next three years we spent in reform school. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dad, they, they planned on having like 12 kids, but they quit. That's enough of that. They would come and you know, give us candy like at Christmas, and we lived in an orphan orphanage. <laughs> how about the story about they had how, all of you children in a one two bedroom house? Everybody but me. Yeah, they lived in a, a two bed. Plenty of room till Alan came in. That's right. And Joe and I are the only ones that didn't live back there again as adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joe and I are the only ones that didn't live back there again as adults. Yeah. Terry just sold the house just four or five months ago. What year did your mom and dad buy that? Right after he got back from the war, so it probably would have been like 55. And it was well, his house payment was like $55 a month. Oh, I think he paid oh. cash for it because... Probably the house only cost $7,000. Yeah. But yeah. still $7,000 then was yeah. a lot. Big, yeah. You know, yeah. To the but he, was, he had a GI bill and he said that it was $55 a month. Oh, really? Because oh. he probably only made... Sixty dollars a week or twenty-five? I don't know. <laughs> they didn't pay much in those days. I got one more car story for you. All right. So I uh, was going to go out to the um, show with some friends. There, and then yeah, we get the light. Yeah, that's right. That's good. You slide on me. You slide on. Me. Yeah. 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 And if you all want to stand or sit over there and just kind of talk, we got mics and we just kind of go full for it. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on. Okay. Take your seat. <laughs> you sit over that one. Let's put it in another Either one's fine. You know, that one? but Joe. Yeah, hop on in. Sue. 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 I'm She's in the back. Can you get us all in, in Paul? A little more. Yeah, this is like the old days. <laughs> At the dinner table. <laughs> Oh, wait, can you yes. guys give me a couple it's more? It's bigger than we used to be. <laughs> Maybe you can yeah. semi-circle it so Sue can No, it is. Oh, uh, she Sue's can, coming. She should be able to fit as long as you're tight side to side. Just when she I'll comes. <clears throat> hey, can you tell the story of when your mom had to tie a string around your wrist and <laughs> I think yeah. they, I know that one. I think the same story, Deb and I, we snuck away somewhere. No, it was me and... It was me and uh, Phil See, that's Freeze. what I said. We got two separate Mark stories. Freeze. We walked downtown. That was a Crystal Lake, Lake house. We have one in Cary. From the Crystal Lake house, we walked downtown with the neighbor kid. And uh, my punishment, that? I was probably kindergarten. And uh, here's the neighborhood kid, you know, when we got back, he, his parents were like pretty mad and started belt, you know, whipping him with some kind of like, oh my God, what are, what are they going to do to me? <laughs> and mom tied a string around my waist and decided to just make, have me sit on my chair and read my books. And that was my punishment. Of course, she tried that with a neighborhood kid. I kept the, on telling her, I think you should beat her, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the neighborhood kids had done that later in, when we were older. And she just Untied the string and got away. I just knew I had to stay there. That yeah, was my question. That would be the luck that would kill you. <laughs> You'd have the respect. And uh, Sue story? did the same thing in the backyard. She had the yarn around her wrist. You could have pulled one string and been gone. Oh, wait. But you got she got in story. trouble because of, we went to the Pixie. Yeah, we went down to the Penny Candy at the candy store. How old were you? I was there. Probably uh, six. Crossing the railroad tracks did and going to the store. Four? <laughs> no, we didn't drive that far at that time. But yeah. Did you tell your story when you got tied? Well, I don't know if I heard that story so many times that it, I just forgot it and thought I was with on that trip, but maybe I wasn't. So you and I are the ones who didn't get tied to a chair? You were like, yes. You didn't think I had permission or whatever. But, uh, so I have a, another car story. Is um, I went the you know legal route or whatever. I had my license, had a car but I needed a 
bigger car, so I asked my dad, can I borrow your friends. car because not everyone will fit in the one that was on because we're going to the show. And he said, yeah, go ahead and take the Lincoln Mark two or three, or whatever that was, two, two door Lincoln, and we put seven kids in there and went to Aragon <laughs> and saw the Pretenders. Oh, I was 17. <laughs> <fell down. laughs> but cow. no incident, came back, and then a couple weeks later I came clean and um, told my dad that, uh, you know, I borrowed the car and we went to Chicago to see a <laughs> show in, at the Aragon, and he said, well, you know, it came back and it was cleaner than when I borrowed it to you and it was full of gas. Everything's but good. don't put Lemon Pledge on the seats anymore because... Every time I make a turn, your mom comes sliding right over. <laughs> <laughs> so, were you burning leaves in there? It smelled like burning leaves. What we used I was too young. <laughs> what we used for a camper back in those days was a 48 International KB6 school bus. And it had a rack on the back for my dad's BSA. And that was fond memories of traveling in that old school bus that was converted into a motorhome. Did I show you that picture? We had yeah, we a went little to changing room in the back by the, the bathroom. You had to shut the closet door and lock the bathroom door <laughs> so you could change there. But Tony did that to me and then didn't let me out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, so she's always hated this bus. Not, not on purpose. We were <laughs> running, off to, to running off to the pool. beach. And then poor Sue sat in there when it was summer <laughs> with no air conditioning while we were all at the beach. And she could have just pushed the door down, but she was crying when we came home. Oh, and she was just a little time, girl. Yeah, another time when we were in Canada, we were we had gone walked from a campground to the to church, and then we were walking back, and I was trying to keep up with Joe. He was running ahead, and all of a sudden, he was out of my sight. I looked back, the family's <laughs> out of my sight. I was walking around in this campground for a long time before I found the family again. That was quite frightening for me, <laughs> I have to say. We lost Running into houses and stuff. We lost Sue at uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. And then when we finally found her, she was sitting there with a cupcake and I looked over at Mount We were all pissed. I want to I wanna get lost too, because I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were out west on that same trip. We went to Reptile Gardens and Helen was probably only about three or four. And we were these two giant tortoises were running through and I, I'm pretty sure I saved your life. I was charging by and I picked her up and almost got trampled by a giant tortoise. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a picture on Humpin later. Right? Who's your parents' favorite? <laughs> yeah, Me. It's always the youngest, we always say. <laughs> There's more pictures of me there. Well, I'm not amazing. I want pictures of Terry. The first. <laughs> the first born. First born was always hard to raise. <laughs> no, we well, had a, a tough crowd. <laughs> we didn't come from a wealthy family, but there was always food on the table, yep. and uh, never felt my, deprived. My mom always could make a a good meal out of whatever was in the refrigerator. We, Stretch and, that food. And we had dessert every meal, and my wife does not feed me dessert after every meal good anymore. <laughs> and what about the plastic? The powdered milk, yep. Sometimes, well, sometimes the carnation the, and some breakfast. to stretch a dollar, <laughs> they would mix 50-50 with uh, carnation instant milk. And we could always tell. He couldn't slip that one past us. <laughs> and then we'd get a two-gallon dispenser, and it would, they'd put it in the refrigerator, but it had a little spigot, so you kept it in there, but you could fill a pitcher up. And we came home from church one time, and Mary Jane, my mom's Down syndrome sister, she was home alone, and she... The, the little spigot broke, and so she tried to, rather than tipping the thing upside down, she found every bowl and every pitcher oh in the God, house, and it was that. spilt all over the floor, and she was all shook up, and poor girl. She tried. <laughs> I don't she's all by herself speaking perfect English. <laughs> 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 what about the time her dress caught on fire? Oh, oh yeah. That's a big trip. Yeah. What year would that have been? Probably? We were in, I was in grade school no, still. Mm. I, I was still living at home. Oh, yeah. yeah, one time she would always Seven. wear a, a cotton house dress, and she was, she'd always empty the dishwasher, but she, my mom was downstairs doing laundry or something, and she heard Mary scream, and she was putting a dish away above the stove, and her cotton dress caught on fire. And she, from, a, from above her knees to her neck, she just had first, second, and third degree yeah, burns. We came home from school that day and saw her dress laying in the bathtub. We had no idea what had just happened. Yeah. <laughs> there were no 
wow. cell phones at that time. So mm -hmm. I didn't know. And they had a little neighborhood doctor there, and the, rather than taking her to the hospital and have her get kind of lost with all the commotion, my mom brought her back to the doctor's office every Dr. day, Copeland. Dr. Copeland, and, and changed her dressings, I think every day, yeah. for a while. Noni would come to the house, Noni the corny. Yeah. <clears throat> Tight-knit tight community back then. Yeah. And the old Dr. Copeland, he was very old then, and I remember I had, I was in track and I had, all of a sudden I had like 13 warts on my feet and he used this electric needle that would shock them and burn them out and he burned all those 11 out and he would come up with that electric needle and he would be shaken like this until he'd get right to what he was doing or to give me a shot of Novocaine and then he'd stop for a second, give me the Novocaine and pull it out and he was just like this. Hmm. Not because he was working on me, that's just how he was. <laughs> Same doctor had uh, sewed me up, I cut my arm on a piece of glass and for you can still see a V there, Sliding down Dr. Here. Copeland, and then about right before mom died, and she goes, Joan, you want this piece of glass? She saved that. Oh, <laughs> saved it all those years. <laughs> and then there was the well, cactus patch. Oh, yeah. I think I might have got rid of it. I don't know. Do we, do we have it still? You have it. Oh, I don't I'll probably, I'll no, probably pass it on to our kids. I was sitting there when she goes, Joan, do you want this? And she pulls it out of the kitchen cabinet. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that from? She had well, everything, she and she usually knew where it was, but yeah. it might take her a minute. She I know how si Didn't siblings find, would. Find the jar with your beer clippings. Is that right? Or first haircuts. We found a lot of those, the first yes, haircuts. We have all wow. those at our house then, I know that when siblings would have their different spats. Uh, one time I woke up, and my brother Joe had an album cover of this scary lady. <laughs> in front of my face, and he had taken this big chunk of callus off his foot. He put that in my mouth and then had that one, and then woke me up. So I, some later, later time story. went by, I spit it out and think, didn't think that was very nice. But I got back at him. He was laying on the couch with his mouth open. I took a butterscotch chocolate chip. I dropped it right in his mouth. <laughs> Yay. You really got him. But that's after I took it out of the toilet. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> we had this so camping many club. Kids. So, so, many kids. Kids. so many kids. In 1971, there was a camping club that mainly Christian belief or whatever. There's 60 families deep. There was no electric or anything like that. They would park in a big circle and have a fire uh, pit in the middle, and uh, I don't know. You show up and kids run rampant and. Uh, but Stealing from coolers. They did like jousting in canoes. They'd have like big uh, rubber boxing gloves on sticks and try and push the other ones out of canoes. They're, they were tough back then, that's for sure. But uh, the potluck dinner was, you know, just to pass with 60 families. It was Steal huge. Beer from the neighbor's campground. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah was a lot of fond Jack memories. Pfeffer a lot of people had a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Until we came along. Huh? Until we came along. Lake, Lakeland Campground, they had that racetrack there, and Dad would take his 750 Kawasaki and race all those dirt bikes around there. He used to let me ride it around that track, that, that 750, and I was I was probably only in eighth grade. No, around not 72. Either. So then I would, they'd be coming, I'd, be, I'd look at the speedometer and I'd look at the track, and I was going 75 miles an hour on the track. <laughs> And Jeez. I took it over a jump. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> You'd fishtail. <laughs> 70 miles I'm sure an hour. he's proud of you. I never dumped it, though. <laughs> That's where I dumped never it. Dumped it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was on the highway. It was going 150. <laughs> <laughs> that darn wheel. <laughs> the second uh, two-stroke Kawasaki that he had, uh, I had got this uh, motocross bike, and he said, I'd like to see how fast that motocross bike is. Um, against your uh, or against this Kawasaki and uh, he was working at a gravel uh, delivery place and right there they had a gravel road and uh, I think Tony had a IT I had a um, Husqvarna and then he had the Kawasaki and we all took off and then um, my dad goes well I thought you would have been a little faster than that and I said well I didn't really get on it because I was afraid I'd break your windshield when you know I get on it Oh come on, let's let's do it or whatever. And so we lined up again and went. And then he said, "I should have listened to you the first time because there was rocks bouncing off my windshield and he went by." <laughs> 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 you got to look out for Dad. He probably, 
I mean, oh, God, that, that thing was crazy cool. fast. A 360 Husqvarna six-speed two-stroke. It just went <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> oh, God, it went fast. He oh. needed a knobby tire on it to be in com competition with a dirt bike, though. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. As soon as I got into third and all the gravel started flying behind me, yeah. he was in it. <laughs> Dad was always in his glory when he had somebody to talk to about motorcycles. <laughs> and the first weekend of May for, I don't know if it was 15 years, he always said, don't put anything on your calendar for the first weekend of May. And we always took an overnight ride up into Wisconsin, listened to my dad's stories and... Muscaday. Yeah, Muscaday, Wisconsin. A lot of people went on those rides, though. Yeah, the Gaugers and Wingates. Just the boys. Did you camp out in the tent? Yeah, early on, and then later when got Dad got old, we started, he didn't want to lay on the grounds. So we stayed in hotels. Remember the last time we took a ride like that, Dad's shoulder was bothering him, and he, he goes, well, I'll ride up there a little bit with you. And he turned around. To, like Harvard or something like that, and he turned around and goes, yeah, you can't leave. I'm already out of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was that Indian Forge where that dam was. That's oh, where he yeah. rode with us there, and he turned around and went back. I must have <laughs> Yeah, it was oh, a different ride, that. that's for sure. And then the, try to do that later on. My brothers could never do it. Yeah. And then we took that one trip around uh, the Mississippi with all the family. All the way around the Mississippi? Did we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just to it. Oh, no, no. We, we did ride along the Mississippi. Like not in the motorcycle. Along the so. Mississippi, I, yeah. Helen yeah, we, was on your bike, I know, and I was, I was on Robin's. Yeah. In, yeah, we rode along. You were on. Well, I think I was riding with Stan. Yeah, Stan. It was yeah. Muscadet. Yeah. We just oh. kind of did yeah, the route, the ride. Yeah, and, and sure, you know. Yeah, and, and that's then, right. Yeah. Yeah, so they were in the right. Jeep, <laughs> and we met up with the rest of the uncles and aunts with their campers. Fritz and Shirley and Vernon Murray. They moved to motorhomes instead of doing the camper thing. That's probably where Dad slept. I remember Dad this uh, one uh, couple that was with, with the Gogger family. They rode uh, 1950s BMWs, and I had these two-cylinder or three-cylinder two-stroke uh, Kawasaki's. And the uh, um, man said, "You know, with, you, with that Kawasaki, don't worry about waiting up for us or whatever." And that and uh, when we got into these county roads, there's no way I could even catch them. <laughs> it was wow. like I was in the back of the pack blowing smoke. And Except the away way they went. <laughs> they had, their tires, they had 50,000 miles on their tires. <laughs> so they owned a motorcycle shop. Nicest people on earth. Yeah. They were murdered back in about 92. That's some Chicago outlaw. <laughs> Bad day. And his son was uh, accused of yeah. murder. Sat on death row for how many years? Five years? Yeah. Then some college uh, um, law yeah. take it as an, a project to look into his case more, and they got him freed. Uh, they find a guy. His sister was the big yeah. part of getting him free. Yeah. Somebody in, in prison already that was in for another conviction yeah. admitted to it. Oh. Yeah. It's gone back. Yeah. I bought that book that his son wrote. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I'd like to read that. Did he talk about that? Yeah. yeah. With mostly it's about all about wow. I know I did work for McHenry County sheriffs and detectives, and the ones that investigated that. It's pretty interesting. So are we done? Is that still running? Yeah, I'll still going, but I think we've... He yeah. turned it off. I think we, we we're probably. No, <laughs> my hand's going out. <laughs> Girls don't talk very much. You should make them talk more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it down. Hello. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Equal rights amendment. We <laughs> talked enough. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, Didn't thanks, talk guys. about your mom anywhere near enough. <laughs> Oop. Here's your mic, Mike. Mother, Colin. Here's a picture.